Hello people of the internet, I am Howard and I'm here to bring you guys another video game commentary. Today's Friday, so you know what that means. It's going to be the first video of Findings Friday. Today, I'll be telling you all about how I've discovered about how video games affect the brain, both positively and negatively. First, I'll simply lay down the facts, since many people seem to not know them. And then I'll give my own personal opinion on the matter, which may be a bit biased because I would definitely consider myself to be a gamer. First, I'll begin with the cons of video games and how they advest adversely affect humans, especially de developing adolescence and youth. First, video games often result in addiction, which, in turn, leads to slowed mental and neural development, as well as decreased social activity. In developing adolescence, social communication and activities are vital to creating important skills for the real world and for their own futures. This addiction to video games often leads to inactivity, which, according to the Huffington Post, has caused American child obesity rates to be at the highest it has ever been. Also, Dr. David Greenfield, founder of the Center for Internet Technologies Addiction, compares video games to slot machines, since they both have the same type of reward structures that make people keep wanting to come back and try to play more. As a result, he advises parents to pay attention to what their kids are playing, in an effort to establish boundaries and communication. Also, according to a study by the National Institute on Media and the Family, this addiction leads to poor schoolwork and, arg and increased argumentativeness, meaning that they are far more likely to fight with teachers, friends, and even their parents. This may be due to the fact that they spend more time gaming than studying, and because violent games such as Call of Duty and, and Halo cause the gamers themselves to become more violent in the interactions within their daily lives with, as I've said, their family, friends, and teachers. Unfortunately, the cons do not end there. Video game addiction can lead to poor concentration, according to a paper published by Psychology of Popular Media Culture, increased depression and anxiety, per a study by the National Institute on Depression and Anxiety, and it can also, according to a study in the Journal of Psychology and Popular Media Culture, which was published in February 2012, um, be the reason that there has been such a rise in attention deficit and impulsiveness disorders. Now, I'll go into the pros of gaming. First, since gaming prompts gamers to think on their feet to solve problems, the American Psychological Association, the APA, considers gaming brain training, since it trains our brains to think quickly to solve problems. Similarly, research by the University of Rochester came to a similar conclusion that, quote, gaming gives us decision making, fast analytics, and alert, nimble thinking skills, since it gives our brains a, quote, workout. This same study presented that gaming enhances human motor movement, allowing us to move quicker and more accurately as well. Similarly, gaming allows humans to gain anticipation strategy, meaning that gamers can, quote, keep long-term goals in mind while dealing with immediate problems as well, which is essential in the business world, among other things. All of these pros of video games can be translated to psychological tests, since games like StarCraft, The Sims, or League of Legends boost us cognitively. This boost can actually be used to slow down the aging process, especially mental decay. The University of Iowa conducted a study to prove this with 681 healthy seniors, in which those who gamed experienced a quote, cog cognitively complex experience, energy requiring task, and ability requiring task, which stimulated their mind more than simple online crossword puzzles, which was the control. Now, for my own opinion. I think that gaming is definitely beneficial to developing youth, especially since it stimulates the brain. In moderation, there are no problems with video games, especially since many of the downsides of them are linked directly to the addiction to the video games. So, simple time management, education, and variation can negate the vast majority of these um, cons. Also, I feel as though video games are a good way 
to get things off your mind and to vent your frustrations. I have also found, through personal experience, that gaming increases percept perceptiveness. Since games like Call of Duty or Halo or even League of Legends require you to be able to pick targets off from a distance accurately. Which also allows you to work on your hand-eye coordination, which is very important. Um, not only in sports, but just like in the real world, trying to communicate and uh, work with those around you. All in all, I believe that, on balance, the pros of gaming outweigh the cons by far, since it is so easy to avoid the cons, and since the pros are so beneficial to society due to its scientific advantages, not only in the field, um, the field of neurology, but also in psychology, since it can actually enhance um, human interaction. But also because they're fun. Just that reason. Video games are fun. They're a good way to hang out with friends over the internet when you either don't have the time to hang out with them or just can't uh, arrange a time in which you guys can all meet up at a reasonable hour. So playing video games with your friends, talking with them over programs such as Skype while playing, allow you to get that social interaction with other people. Thank you. This has been Bindings Friday with me, Howard. So, don't forget, don't go change. <laughs>